students, you will recall that in one of my sessions on Thursday, uh, we had discussed a short case in which uh, there was a swelling occupying the cubital fossa and uh, we had uh, discussed the clinical features of that patient and we had arrived at a diagnosis. So as Dr. Rohit has told you, recently I had the opportunity to operate on this patient as and as I have been doing in the past. Uh, if I operate on these cases, I always get back to you and show you what were the operative findings and uh, whether they were correlating with the pre-operative evaluation of the patient, both clinical as well as uh, the radiological or the imaging aspect of it. So with these words, I go on to initially have a recap, a short recap, and then the surgical part. So uh, the patient in question, you will recall, is a 25-year-old lady who presented to us with swelling in the front of the left elbow, which was associated with pain. Whenever she used to move the elbow, she would experience some pain. And as far as the patient is concerned, it was the pain which which uh, sort of highlighted that she has a swelling also in that region. The patient said that uh, she delivered six months ago and after delivery, when she started holding the child, she noticed that she's having pain in the elbow and for the past six months, her attention was drawn to the front of the elbow and she noticed that there was a swelling. So this was the brief history of this patient. And this is the clinical photograph which shows the right dominant normal limb. And it was the left non-dominant limb. And this is the area which was, which was occupied by the swelling, which is more evident when we took a picture from the side, from the medial side. And this is the outline that we mentioned that it is a sort of a pear-shaped or a mango-shaped swelling or a kidney-shaped swelling as uh, the different expressions can be used to describe this swelling. And on asking the patient to flex the elbow, it was quite obvious that the swelling was on the medial side. There was no swelling on the right lateral side because this is the bicipital, this is the tendon of the biceps brachii. So the swelling was just medial to it. There's no swelling over the biceps tendon or the muscle. And this is the medial epicondyle area. So the swelling was occupying the medial part of the cubital fossa and extending into the distal arm. And it was also observed that the swelling was mobile. And when we palpated, we could palpate a nodule, a, a hard nodule, which was tender, which was tender. The rest of the swelling was soft and it was fluctuant. So this, with this finding, the other interesting finding was that this swelling was reducible and there was a sign there was a there was a, a sign of demonstrable refilling of the swelling and this is what you can see you can watch it again for those who were not present last time on pressure and then on release you can see the swelling was refilling up. So this is classically seen in those swellings which are related to the vascular structures. And since this was non-pulsatile, it is unlikely to be having an arterial feeder or an arterial origin. And the fact that it slowly refills, it was pointing towards most likely 
some venous malformation and by our knowledge of these problems we know that hemangiomas are of two type capillary and cavernous hemangiomas anyway these were this these were the diagnoses which were considered and we summarized that there was a spontaneous solitary normothermic painful slow growing 8 cm by 4 cm ill demarcated soft with tender hard part compressible swelling located in the medial part of the cubital fossa the plane was subcutaneous and it was without any neurovascular deficit or proximal lymph adenopathy with this the clinical diagnosis that entertained were uh, a hemangioma a lymphangioma an abscess we discussed the pros and cons of each one of them but then abscess was lower down and ganglion cyst was another possibility but we discussed that it is most likely to be a hemangioma due to the characteristic features of compressibility and swelling uh, coming back again on release of pressure and the fact that there was no local rise of swelling the temperature there uh there was it was not angry looking there was a remote possibility that it could be uh maybe a cold abscess but then even a cold abscess should not have this sign of reducibility and refilling uh we discuss that the investigations which need to be performed plain and simple x-ray ultrasound ultrasonography can also help in such situations an mri scan can be done and a ct angiogram can be done to to exclude or to find if there is an arterial feeder in addition to the venous venous uh, malformation well uh, this x ray was not available in the previous presentation but i have brought this x ray today and you can see that there are these two white arrows are pointing towards a speck of calcification both visible in the ap as well as in the lateral uh, uh, aspect and probably this is uh, the area which was we, we we discussed that there was a nodular swelling there a pea sized nodule was there which was tender which was hard in consistency probably this is the there is some calcification in that area and calcification by the way is also seen typically in vascular malformations this is one of the findings there there is some calcium calcium deposition in these areas